Thank you guys for joining us, for clicking on that thumbnail. Uh, and we want to welcome you guys to our pilot episode for our very first podcast. So we're going to give you guys some quick introductions. Um, but let me tell you a little bit about, about us. Um, we are a group. We're an independent uh, filmmakers. Um, this is Yasmin and this is Sarah. Um, and we sort of started collaborating uh, late last year, right? About... Yes, to be precise, in midsummer 2019. 2019. And we kind of met while we were volunteering over at Habitat for Humanity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so um, I will let you know that my name is Michael. Um, I am from the San Francisco Bay Area in California. Um, uh, my background is in film, mostly uh, corporate or commercial promotional type videos. And uh, I'm here now in the Midwest. And um, I've been wanting to do podcasts for like the last five, six, seven years and just never got around to it. So, you know, with uh, Kobe Bryant's death, I was like, you know, there's no time but now to start working on some of the things that we want to work on. So with that being said, we uh, cranked out this studio over here, this little podcast studio um, in like the span of like, what, a day, right? Yes. In total. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or maybe less than a day. Yeah. Half day. So well, why don't we? Why don't you guys introduce yourselves? Um, tell us what your name is. Where are you from? What's your background? What do you want to do on this podcast? Yeah. Sure. So hello, hello. My name is Yasmin. Um, you can call me Yaz, Yasi, um, Jasmine, whatever you like. It's certainly the same to me. Uh, but my close friends, they call me Yasi. So I'm originally from Iran. Um, I moved to US around like um, six years ago uh, for graduate study. And I went to school for architecture. So my background is in architecture. But as you know, design and films and any sort of art, they're kind of related. So I always wanted to do like production like podcast or films and anything like visual involving visuals or audios so now I'm doing it and I'm really glad that we have this opportunity with my good friends to create this podcast series for you and we hope you also enjoy it so that's all I can say Thank you. Sarah, you're on the spot. Awesome. Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. And my background is in anthropology and film and visual media. Um, yeah, and I just, yeah, we've been working on our, our projects together. And this podcast seemed like a fun thing. So it's like, yes, let's do it. <laughs> nice. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and I think, you know, we just, uh, part of um, the want or the desire here is that, you know, we we love movies um, for many different reasons, and we wanted a platform to sort of talk about that. Um, um, so why don't we do that? Actually, to start off, I'm kind of interested to know, like, what kind of movies do you guys like? Okay, so I like the movies that can offer something interesting to me and maybe something surprising that I didn't know before. So I don't... Why don't we start off with genre? Like what genre of movies do you like watching oh, normally? A lot. Yeah, horror? So horror movie, we should set that aside because okay. I'm not in for all types of horror movies, but I like horror movies, if you can call them horror, like the, the sixth sense um, or the ring uh, especially the original spin off not the American one and Ringu uh, the ring you're talking about the Japanese one not yeah. the American one right? yeah is it the Ringu oh, Ringu okay okay yeah okay yeah yeah the Japanese one and um, yeah so I like suspenseful dramas trailer um action movies so i don't have a specific genre in mind 
but um, over the past few years, uh, I developed this passion for documentary films because I feel like that I am in a position in my life that I have watched enough like fictional stories, so I have more tendency to know uh, what's going on around me in the real world and um, I want to get myself more knowledgeable every day about the issues that are happening in real time around the world. So I feel like documentaries are such a great way to give me that opportunity to educate myself. So, yeah. Great, great. And, you know, I'm sorry, I dropped the ball on the introduction. I I think that's an important thing to note is that... um, we collectively as a group, we like really love telling stories and especially making um, short to long form independent documentaries, you know, um, serving under, like shedding a light on underserved or underappreciated mm-hmm. uh, subjects or subject matters. Um, but um, considering our background and, and um, you know, as a creative director, being a part of larger productions, story really matters. Um, and, and I found two people that feel the same way. So when we talk about movies, hopefully we have a unique uh, take for you guys because we want to sort of emphasize, um, you know, uh, some of the, the, the elements from sort of um, uh, people with like film backgrounds um and um sort of extrapolate like what we liked and for what reasons why so we're going to try and do that um keep in mind that this is our pilot episode so we i don't know about these two but i'm gonna suck but i will get better so i will heed your suggestions leave them in the comments below uh let us know what we can do uh to improve because we want to make something enjoyable for you guys um sarah what about you what kind of movies do you like? Um, I feel like my answer is pretty similar to Yassi's. There's not a specific genre that I really love. I like watching all different kinds of movies. I would probably put horror at the bottom, mm. but I like psychological thrillers or like suspense. Mm-hmm. But like, I hate Saw. <laughs> Just... No. Speaking of which, I was telling them the reason why it's probably on her mind. Oh, and remember, let's try and get close to the microphone. Oh, yes. Sorry, I unconsciously lean away from the mic. No, no, no. no. <laughs> unconsciously. Very <Are> consciously. You... <laughs> uh, yeah, no, if you guys haven't checked out, it was a surprise recently. It was Chris Rock and Samuel L. Jackson popping up in the trailer for Spiral. So I had no idea that last image of Chris Rock being handcuffed to a pipe I'm all for it. I love Saw. So I, I will get to me, but what? So horror is your least favorite, mm-hmm. but like what would be in your top three? Mm-hmm. I'm guessing Asian foreign cinema. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good guess. And yeah, really, yeah, probably that. Um, I, yeah, I like, I really like watching foreign cinema and um, documentaries and just, I don't know. I like entertaining movies like Marvel movies. Oh, yeah. Marvel movies. They're fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I'll be in line just ready to put the the Thanos purple makeup on. Mm -hmm. Like, I'll dress up. Like, let's get it going, right? Yeah. Actually, I've never done that before, but I think I would. You should. (laughs) Yeah. Can I be Tony Stark? (laughs) You can be Iron Man. Sure. You can be Iron Woman. Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And what if they make another like spin off based on me? The idea of, of like a girl who used to be a fan of like You know Iron Man. You know, from your background, it shouldn't be Iron Man, it should be Iran Man. Oh yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and I wanna use also this opportunity to say the correct way to pronounce Iran is Iran, not Iran. Because Iran means I ran away. It's Iran. Okay, I'm sorry about that. No, Iran. Uh, just, uh, Iran, just your, Iran of, woman. That doesn't have the same yes. like ring though. Yeah, Iran woman. Okay, I like that. So we all agree at least here that we all love Marvel movies. Mm-hmm. Yes. Notice no shout out to DC. Birds of Prey is out this weekend. Uh, I really love Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman was fantastic. <laughs> and actually Shazam, if you haven't seen, was like a decent DC movie. It was like on the other end of the But You have Justice League here, which is, you know, sorry, DC. I will work for you, though, 
if you ever want a director. <laughs> and then on the other end of the spectrum is like Wonder Woman, Shazam. Mm-hmm. I hear Birds of Praise, fantastic Joker, got a lot of yeah. attention and praise this year yeah. or this past year. So they're doing some good things over in DC now, you know, yeah. not worried yes. about the world building, trying to follow that like Marvel foot pr- or, or outline. Uh, you know, and just trying to concentrate on 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 character and story, which I think is great. You yeah, know, because nice. you know this this might be a nice segue, but I think we're like you out there that um, you know, like for example, with Marvel movies and with DC movies, you know, not enough attention is paid to the arcs of all the characters. So I think some of the some of the times that these movies have stumbling blocks is when they don't put enough attention to there so like for instance we were talking about the example earlier of like guardians of the galaxy was great don't get me wrong but ronin the accuser is not considered one of like the great marvel villains because i mean he had a big hammer he wants to kill everybody Uh, reason sort of up in the air what what his motivation was right but they spent a whole movie in infinity war with building up thanos Mm -hmm. and his reason it's very clear he believes wholeheartedly that there's finite resources, people, it's uh, the uh, the universe is becoming overpopulated and he's the only one with enough guts to do anything about it. So in his mind, he's the hero of this movie. And I think that's the reason why it worked so well. Yes. I don't know if you guys want to like... Yeah, cause he has actual reasons for his actions, not just yeah. being evil. And I think, again, most of it goes back to the script and how well... Uh, the characters are going to be defined throughout the stories. So I think that in the case of Thanos, because we know him and we get enough back stories about his past and what may what has made him, uh, as we, we see in the movie, uh, we will have an, a lot of information about him and we can relate actually to what he's making these decisions. Um, so he's a... Uh, He's coming from a place that is not very far-fetched and basically anyone can be a villain. So I like about, uh, so when there is a good character development, I like it very much because you can feel those characters and you can understand their reasons and the, the reasons behind their actions. So. I feel like with the Thanos, what makes him a very strong character um, is exactly how well the character has been defined. So you can relate and you can understand the reasoning behind his actions. So he's not just like a big, heavy, bulk guy with like just want to ruin the whole world. He has reasons behind his actions. You might want to like disagree with his reasons, but you can understand where he's coming from. So... I feel like that that again is another sign that how important is the art of the storytelling and developing the good characters. Yeah, definitely. We were talking about the hero's journey and Joseph Campbell, right? And that's immensely important. I mean, we have, you know, um, you have to build up conflict and you have to build up motivation within a character for anyone to feel some sort of empathy for someone, right? To make a unique or interesting character, um, almost requires that really because that's what makes them interesting Mm -hmm. so um why don't we talk about well well we talked about we like that what else what other elements do you look for um in a good movie like what elements in a movie makes a movie good to you probably how well i can be intrigued in sense of my emotions um I usually like sad movies, but it's not because that I want to cry in the movie theater to call a movie a good movie. If I am shocked or if I feel fearful or weak or strong in the cinema or while I'm watching the film, I can make that kind of connection with the story and characters. So I feel like that there must be an emotional element for me. Um... It could be negative emotions, it could be like positive emotions, but anything that can uh, talk with me in other languages, uh, in the language of emotions, I would say yes to it. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that the movies that I love so much throughout my life, 
they all have this kind of like emotional elements mm-hmm. into them. So, and for example, last year, while I was watching uh, the movie Joker, I I feel emotional. Mm-hmm. I felt emotional and uh, I could understand him. So part of the reason that I like that movie a lot was because of the emotional element. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, so why don't we like go down on the list of importance then? Um, because the Joker, we were we were kind of having this like off um, camera discussion about like what you can get away with, right? So I love gear, I love cinematography. Everything I do uh, is based around uh, sort of like that as a focal point because you know what lenses convey what sort of feeling do you want are we going ultra wide for some sort of disorienting thing what angles are we getting so I'm constantly looking out for that but I will be the first to admit that a, a skilled director with a great script can take an iPhone, which has been done plenty of times. There was uh, the Soderbergh movie Unseen, right, which was shot on a uh, on an iPhone, I believe. And then there was another movie um, that I can't quite remember right now. But my whole theory is, and I want to hear you guys' thoughts on that, is that if you have great audio, a great script, or a great story, then uh, then the camera really doesn't matter. Like two minutes, I forget all of a sudden that it's not the highest quality visual that i'm that i'm seeing so like with the joker the cinematography was awesome but you got emotionally involved so sarah why do you think that you know a story like the joker or what did they do with with that or just kind of like expound upon that or expand that expand that thought like what's important to you or the visual does cinematography stick out to you like will you walk away positive if if something is just completely gorgeous yeah if something is if if, if something is especially gorgeous, not just like high quality, but you know, like above and beyond, like beautiful landscapes and scenes, and like so beautiful that you notice it. Um, but I feel like most of the time for movies, like it's just it's high quality and it's great, and I don't think about it. Mm-hmm. But like sometimes I can't think of an example. It's just completely gorgeous like is cinematography to you guys is cinematography to you guys so important that if it's bad it will detract from the movie i don't think so because i think my top thing is having an engaging story with like twists and turns that also furthers um the main character's character development Mm -hmm. yeah i agree so we're not really unusual i think most of the audience out there can can relate yeah you know so but i want to like make a counter example which is like the case of 1917 and i feel like cinematography in that movie is so important that it is part of the story like if it wasn't because of the cinematography and the way they shot the movie you cannot understand this story as well because it's literally a very simple straightforward story but what makes it very special and emotional is the way they shot the movie and probably a lot of you guys know that it is shot in a way that you feel like it's a very long continuous shot so there is no jump cut between the scenes and it's like that you can you will allow yourself to be immersed in the environment and to understand the harsh realities of the world war one so cinematography is like important for sure i agree with you especially when it's like super good but i feel like with some films like 1917 it's also part of them their main concepts they make they think about it from the very beginning that they want to shot the film with a certain in a certain way and they Mm -hmm. want a certain type of cinematography and it was part of their main concept behind the movie other because rather than that the story is like simple it's a it's still a great story with very well-defined characters or at least from what we will see in the movie we will get enough information to follow their journey Um, but uh, I want to say that cinematography is like a main element becomes the main element even more important than the script Mm -hmm. in a movie like 1917 so I think think it'd be safe to say that that like movie making involves all the like 
these senses, right? So you're obviously watching with your eyes, right? Mm -hmm. So I think what we can appreciate is when, when people are thoughtful that, you know, people utilize soundtracks in the right way to sort of boost up a moment or use cinematography in a way to supplement the emotion that they want, right? I mean, because you don't want, you don't want to just like throw out <laughs> Michael Bay, huge fan, yes, but sometimes, you know, there's not necessarily a need for a rotating 360 degree hero up angle shot when someone's just like getting them from a desk, right? Yes. <laughs> so if, if what they're doing, if their cinematography doesn't stick out, but in a way, um, enhances what the story is, then that's something that you like really is beneficial, yes. right? To, to your movie watching experience. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And I think at the end of the day, movie as a holistic whole is compromised of many elements. So, um, and if the bundle isn't work or if there is any like bad part, specifically bad uh, like for example if there is a bad audio that bothers you the audience will get off even if they have the best script yeah. ever so i feel like that it's a bundle and as a whole it should work for the audience but of course if i want to rate which element is important i will vote probably for the script and um, the story of course that's always going to be at the yes. end of the day the most important thing i think it's just important to know like um, sort of where we're coming from uh, and when we talk about movies in the future we'll definitely try and highlight these different elements so why don't we get to it for like the first example we're gonna talk a little bit today about um, our personal favorite movie of all time uh, some movies from this past year uh, and some of the movies that we're gonna be looking forward to uh, coming up so what is your favorite movie of all time um so i think i have to pick an animated movie right now which is kubo and the two strings which came out a little while ago i don't remember but it's um made every everything is made out of clay and it's stop motion so it's a very unique kind of movie that team does great work I, they I, do I, I forget. Well, let me look up what the uh name is but go ahead yeah they, they just do such beautiful work and not only that the storyline is so beautiful and it made me cry it's emotional it's heartwarming and it's i think that it's like beautiful scenery and everything about it is just for those that haven't great. watched kubo and the two strings out there mm -hmm. can you give a brief like synopsis of what it's about yeah so kubo and the two strings um it's about this little boy kubo and he has this instrument where when he strings it he can make like paper fly and it's magic and stuff but um he in the, in the beginning of the movie you see um him and his mother hiding in this cave place and then um, kubo goes on this like hero's journey and um and there's lots of themes of like family and him finding out his past and who he is it's very yeah. moving yeah i guess you know what that would have been um maybe that was sort of my intention with that question as well so you can answer for me like if you were to ask me what kind of movies do am i like drawn to it's usually like the underdog stuff like i love mm -hmm. i love rudy i love um uh yeah i love movies like that i'm, I'm you know like i even love like the duff Right, I don't know if you guys know that, the, what <laughs> yeah. the Duff stands for. You remember that? No. Uh, I don't even. It's um. <laughs> God, we're gonna have to cut that or leave it to show how dumb I am. I hit a pothole. Um, but yeah, I'm drawn to underdog movies. So my question for you is: Do you, I mean, are you drawn automatically to like animated movies? I th I think I am. I really love animation because I think animation is beautiful. Okay, what's your favorite movie? Oh, now I want to name my favorite animations of all time. <laughs> we can do that later. But what, what's what like? Um, yeah, what is your yeah favorite movie? And tell us uh, what it's about and like why you liked it. Yeah. So the most memorable movies that is on top of my mind for most part of my life is the movies that I watch um, 
while I was younger, maybe in high school or like even smaller. Um, so I want to name the movie The Green Mile. I think the director mm. is like Frank Darabont. I am not sure if I pronounce his name is uh, in the right way or not. Um, so Tom Hanks uh, played in that movie and um, there was the other actor that he passed away unfortunately. Uh, Michael Clark Duncan? Yes. And um, this movie is like so beautifully shot and so for those who don't know um, the movie is uh, about like a prison or a section in a prison that uh, is keeping uh, the prisoners that are in uh, line to be executed by an electric chair and um, you will it kind of involved with uh, the characters who are like waiting for their death so uh, yeah I won't spoil <laughs> I, I don't want to spoil the movie but there is one character that is in inter uh, that th that you will see and uh, that is played by Duncan. Uh, uh, he's got like magic powers or something, right? Yeah. So he's the only innocent person hmm. that you know that he's innocent, and you will feel from you will understand from the beginning of the story that he's kind of a weird uh, character. Like he is not that he might not seem as intelligent or smart and he's there for like killing uh two young uh girls and he was accused of um uh, uh he was accused of uh raping and murdering like two young uh, girls and because he was a black guy obviously um, there was a lot of a stigma around uh, that uh the crimes he has been committed but in reality he he is a very like uh good character innocent and he has some kind of like magical power like superpower if you want to call that so he's kind of like a medium and he has like healing power so it's a very beautiful... oh so this is not a prequel to eight mile <sighs> no no okay no. sorry please continue <laughs> yeah so yeah that movie is like this is a sad movie and i like that movie a lot because so are you drawn to like dramas yeah that I mean, especially thing? it's like a movie that i watched when i was very young um so maybe the first time i watched it i was around like 12 to 13 years old and uh it was one of the, considered one of the safe movies that my parents allowed me to watch <laughs> so but it was That's like just so weird because you're always so bubbly and stuff so to hear that you're drawn to like sad dramatic movies <laughs> I feel like that's not so surprising yeah maybe not yeah, yeah but yeah i i like that movie a lot and um yeah it's it's emotional i haven't watched it for so long so i want to come back and watch it again to see if i still have the same feeling for that movie but I remember throughout my like teenage uh, teenage years, I watched it several times, like maybe four to five times. So that's a movie that I like, and I want to name another movie that also I watched around like uh, my teenage years, my, maybe Cheater. later. It's, it's, the question was favorite movie. You're you get two. <gasps> Don't we all get two then? <laughs> what, what is it? What is it? No, so it's like uh, it's not an English uh, speaking movie. It's uh, the Pan's Labyrinth. It's uh, by Guillermo del Toro. Yeah, so it's still that movie is also very. Um, yeah. It has an emotional, fictional, or kind of like, I don't know how to say. It. It's a fantasy movie, mm -hmm. and it's taking place around like, sometime maybe around World War Two, mm -hmm. or the time that there was like a revolution in Spain going on. So it's a very. Um, it's a very nice movie and especially it's like a fantasy movie so you will see a lot of magical creatures in it uh so yeah that's my second favorite and if you're asking for the third i would just leave you with lord of the rings and my time is out oh, oh my, my god goodness. <laughs> if you guys haven't seen look up on youtube kevin smith's take on lord of the rings i think it's hilarious because it's like he boils it down to they're just walking <laughs> it's three movies of walking 
it's That's very true. intense walking though. Yes. <laughs> no, no, no. I love the series too. But just a shout out because I just think he's so like talented. Uh, Guillermo is super talented too. And I'm sorry, I can't recall the name of the uh, Green Mile team. But um, Travis Knight, I believe. I think it's Travis Knight did um, Kubo and the Two Strings. He's also responsible for Paranorman and the Box Trolls. And uh, did the recent uh, um, Bumblebee movie. So, yeah, that dude is super creative. So if you like the visuals of Kubo and the Two Strings um, and haven't seen Paranorman, that's a good movie, too. Okay, so, um, oh, yeah, my turn, right? Yeah, yeah. now your turn. Okay. Your turn. <laughs> All right. Uh, my favorite movie is... Um, it's tough, and it seems like I'm I'm getting drawn to. I love all genre of movies. By the way, I go through like periods of like I'll even like love westerns and stuff. I'm I struggle a little bit with with reading, so I stay away from like <laughs> subtitle movies. Um, but uh, but I always come back to for some reason or some uh, movie that always sticks out to me. And I heard of this from an old article from Roger Ebert. I loved reading his stuff. Um, he really loved Dark City. I think it's a movie that came out in like, the, I want to say the late 90s. Um, and, uh, and who does it start? Mm, I'm going to have to look it up. But I'll tell you, if you haven't seen it already, um, you have to go see it. It's this like sci-fi, dark, noir, mystery, thriller type movie. So basically... Um, the main character wakes up in a bathtub and there's someone murdered in an apartment and he does not know what the hell is going on. And so he starts exploring the city and as he's walking around, there's like the, the street is bustling and then everything pauses and everyone falls asleep and he's the only one still awake. Mm -hmm. And he starts to see some figures in the background manipulating the people around him and so you're on this journey with him to discover what the hell like did first of all that person in the apartment that's dead did i kill that person who am i who are those f bastards <laughs> and what are they doing to all all these people so i can't remember the actor's name um, but um, Kiefer Sutherland, um, pre-24, uh, is in there. He plays a scientist. But if you guys have a chance, I would uh, check that out because that's one of the most, to me, like, re Jennifer Connelly is in ah. there, too. So, yeah, I think that's a, that's a good movie. Um, I'm looking forward to it, it was between that and the matrix for me so I'm totally stoked that they're filming the matrix for they're in San Francisco right now Keanu Reeves and Carrie Ann Moss is there uh, they were seen on the streets of San Francisco filming so uh, I can't wait for that either. yeah I can't wait okay um, so our favorite movies of all time what about in the past year what are some of your favorite movies from the past year? What would you recommend people see? I think I already spilled the beans. So I would definitely recommend watching 1917. It's a great movie. And um, I was so impressed while I was watching it in a movie theater because while you are watching it on a big screen, it's another experience. So I want to also recommend watching Parasite, which again, another movie that I really like, although I didn't like the sub reading the subtitle part, but because my husband is all the time watching like um, Korean and like Chinese. And if field. you always watch it, you'll get used to it. Yes. So we are, um, yeah. So it wasn't that bothersome for me. And um, I love like uh, Korean films a lot. So especially Korean dramas. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's, yeah. My two pick for you to watch, if you haven't watched them, is Parasite and uh, 1917. Obviously, I have other favorites, but I think I am talking, a, I feel like I'm yeah, talking yeah. too much, so no, I will no, let no, you. No, no, no. I, hey, I'm on board with you on Parasite. If you guys have not seen... <laughs> Man, I'm Korean too, and I forgot his damn name. It's probably like Joe in Korean speak, but it's like Bongju. Um, failing. 
I know. I'm. I, I am. I, I am the first to admit I'm a failure when it comes to being Asian. Not good at math. <laughs> none of that. Like, uh, and uh, I'm not good for my people either. The Korean people. Um, I like kimchi though. So feed me. Uh, no, you do make good kimchi. Bong Jung Su. I'm so sorry, Mr. Director, but I'm a huge fan of your work because this guy that did Parasite also did The Host, which was an amazing take on like this like creature feature. Uh, he did uh, Snowpiercer, which is kind of like a low key or like, I don't want to say low key, but it's like a, like a hidden sequel to Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. If you guys have not seen Snowpiercer, amazing movie. Is it the one with the Chris Evans? Chris Evans on a train. The train goes around the world. Like okay. the, it's like post-apocalyptic. The whole earth is enveloped in like cold mm. snow. Um, but this guy is just super talented. And Parasite, I, mean, I was like sitting back, shaking my head, going, "This guy's a genius." Like I wouldn't have thought of that. You know, there's like levels to this game. There's yeah. levels to filmmaking, and this guy is just like rocking it right now. So okay. I love Parasite. I'm all on board with you. Yeah. What have you seen in the like last year? Um, so I actually had to make a list because I couldn't remember what oh, I saw. Oh, here we go. Buckle in, guys. <laughs> Sarah's got a list. What's going on? But there's not... It's just... It's not, I, it's not like your favorite. Just yeah. what, are the, what are the movies you want to talk about? None of them I absolutely list? loved. But um, the movie The Irishman I thought was interesting. Ah, Scorsese. Yes. And that's because... And I think a lot of that reason is because I grew up watching The Godfather because that's my mother's favorite movie. So, you know, they had all the old mobster mm -hmm. actors come back for this film. However, I do think it is way too long. Mm -hmm. It's three oh, hours. Yes. I could last. Sorry, Martin Scorsese and Robert De Niro. I only could last for an hour and a half. It, it's, an, it's, just, it's such an interesting look at um, that time period in the 50s yes. and 60s. And you know, as you know, I watched it with my mom. Do you like period was, pieces? I do like period pieces. I and really your like mom historical loves, stuff. like gangster movies or something? Yes, Why was does. she watching it? <laughs> she, she loves Is she like a former gangster? What's going on there? <laughs> she loves it because um, her parents are from Italy, so they speak Italian, and ah. it reminds her of home. Um, so Joe Pesci reminds think, <laughs> your yeah. mom of home. <laughs> <laughs> and the brutal killings and murders. Apparently, you know, I think my great grandfather was in the mob. <laughs> Holy but who knows? Oh, I thought he was a painter. He was painting the houses. <laughs> <laughs> Reference. You guys got that right. Yeah. If you're watching this channel, you must have gotten that. Yeah. But, Did so? Oh, what about the visuals? Did it take you away at all, or detract, or? I always give you guys shit for getting away from the mic. Did it at all detract like when you saw the, because the technology is getting better and better all the time, but young De Niro. Yeah. Like, did I, that all affect you guys at all? I noticed it. It was like on my mind and I thought he didn't look that young. <laughs> and I was like, I think he's trying, they're trying to make him look younger than he actually looks with that like de-aging technology. Mm -hmm. But like I was always thinking about their ages, so it is something that I noticed. Mm. So honestly, guys, you are so smart because I was like, while I was watching it, I was like, oh, they did such a good job to make De Niro look like old, <laughs> that old. <laughs> At the very, I mean, when we are seeing him, the old. So I have no idea that he is like mm. in real life this old. Yeah. But because the image of him that I have in my mind is like, I still see him as like uh, his most memorable like uh, movies, like the Taxi Driver. I have it. That's the image that I have in mm -hmm. mind of De Niro. The Raging Bull De Niro. Yeah, mm -hmm. or maybe Godfather the, De Niro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or maybe the oldest that I can imagine. Dirty Grandpa like, De Niro. No, I just, <laughs> just want to like mention like meet the fuckers. And <laughs> still in that movie, he is so much young. He mm -hmm. looks so much younger than what he is right now. And it's yeah, sad. He's it's an the older reality. Guy now. He's like, like late 70s or something like that, right? Yeah. Almost 80, I want to say. Jeez, man. And it's, yeah. I think it's great that he's still doing movies. Yeah, and I love the fact that like the team got Joe Pesci out of like retirement because yeah. he wasn't doing anything for the last decade plus, right? Mm -hmm. I love Joe Pesci. Mike, shout out my cousin Vinny. That is a cool <laughs> movie too. Uh, and um, I want to say uh, 
the director's name of Parasite is Bong Jun Ho. So, Sanang uh, Hae, Mr. Ho. <laughs> I make do up love for your it. work. I do. I am. I am trying to. Okay, so you loved the Irishman. You've got a list, so did, no, bring it on. What else you I got? I wouldn't say loved, but it was enjoyable. Um, okay. You, you didn't love anything from 20... You're I, telling me a whole year went by and there wasn't a movie you loved? There were movies I loved, but they weren't from 2019. You didn't even see Parasite, though, so you shouldn't really be talking. Yeah, I haven't seen Parasite. No, there are still movies I need to watch. But I, I Well, I probably my favorite one was Spider-Man Far From Home because I love Tom movie? Holland and it was oh, funny. Jake, Jake, pretty Jake Gyllenhaal. Yes. Like, he was pretty amazing in that, too. Like, he was. You know, I well, think for a Marvel villain, he was like pretty good. And the movie was like creative, right? You would never think of, uh, you know, that's the case. I like that movie a lot also because it was very surprising to me. It was. Yeah, and I love the take on Mysterio because it's mm-hmm. it's funny because you got to balance like, yes, they're bringing some like mysticism and Mysterio's background was he was like a a props guy in, in on films, right? And that's mm-hmm. what he used. But I love that they tied it into to Stark's... Um, what was the name of the... Um, so they showed in Civil War, I think, this like hologram program. I think it's called Barf, right? It's yeah. Called, it was called Barf, right? Mm-hmm. So I love how they tied it into Jake Gyllen, to the Mysterio character that he was him and the team, you know, want retribution because their boss, Tony Stark, was kind of an a-hole, you know, sort of thing. So I, I love that they like, they twisted it around, but he was still Mysterio and yeah. he got to put on the damn globe. That was awesome. So globe yeah. and cape and all. Yeah, Far From Home was awesome. So, yeah. And I'm glad yes. that Sony worked at it because I was so nervous that they were about to lose, um, that uh, uh, Marvel Studios was about to lose their partnership with uh, Sony. But we're back in business, right? I think they got another three movies. I think so. I don't know. I, didn't, I read a bunch of stuff about Marvel is just cracking. Are you guys at all excited about the Disney Plus streaming stuff that... I mean, as, uh, I mean, first let's talk about Marvel and then we'll talk about you know well, yeah. <laughs> the real reason why disney plus is yes. a must have but the trailers dropped on super bowl sunday for wandavision looks amazing there's um the falcon and winter soldier and then there mm-hmm. is i think there's also gonna be a hawkeye movie yeah. or a hawkeye series which is great because hawkeye is so underrepresented in the movies yeah and they're, oh, yes. they're sparing no expenses too i heard it cost 25 no, two hundred two hundred fifty thousand dollars per episode, and they're doing six. Wait, two hundred fifty done twenty twenty five million dollars per episode, and it's six episodes per series. So do the math. That's a hundred fifty million dollars for a six episode series. I mean, that's you know, there, that's it's, more this than is Game not going to this is not going to be like Marvel spinoff on ABC, the she, like Shield, Agents of Shield. Right. This mm-hmm. is like straight up. It could have been in the movie theaters type yeah. of treatment, you know. So yes. Kevin Feige is in, heavily involved still. And he got all the actors returning. But I know what you guys want to talk about is the Mandalorian. Right? Yeah. Uh, okay, we're we're gonna have to save that till the end. You guys have to pause. I know you guys want to talk about one particular character, but we got a list of things to cover. So um, let's stick to movies for now. What other movies? Um, are on your list that stands out that you think was I, I thought, good worth seeing um uh, i thought the hustlers was pretty good the uh, i haven't watched that but hmm. You're not my husband want to watch it so badly yeah i actually didn't want to go see the movies but my friend wanted to so yes. i went um but, is that that movie with j-lo yeah it's with j-lo and it's it yeah head. i'm sorry and it's about like the strippers um it's like a revenge movie yeah revenge plot yeah they come up they come up with a way to like scam the wall street guys Mm -hmm. and how that all goes down and how that crime affected their lives and Mm. they were earning good money for a long time because it's based off of a true story um and i most i mostly like the movie uh the movie like the i think the actresses all did like really well and Mm -hmm. it was enjoyable it took a few like took like an artistic turn in the middle of it that i didn't expect that threw me off um so that was my one complaint about complaint about it mm-hmm. okay but 
don't know if you can watch me to pay me to watch another J-Lo movie. And I'm not going to apologize to that. I don't <laughs> care if I run into her. <laughs> um, okay, any other movies you wanted to talk about? I got a list, too. Ooh. You're not the I mean, only there's one. other movies that I could talk about because I didn't like. Because you oh. didn't like? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, tell me about the your least favorite movie that you have least watched last favorite. year. I really hate Marriage Story. Oh, really? What? Yeah, wait, I think wait, it's wait, just... Wait, wait, wait. Adam Driver? Yeah. Scarlett Johansson? I like Adam Driver and I like Scarlett Johansson, but I hate I, that movie. I didn't, I didn't get around to it. What was, so, what was terrible it's about it? It's just too awkward and too cringy. The second-hand embarrassment is too much. What are we talking about? Performances? Are we talking about the, the story? The are story. Talking, yeah. I think their performances were... I think their performances were good. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. So I guess it's not fair to say I hate that movie, but I just don't like watching it. Um... You didn't enjoy. I did not enjoy. Oh, okay. It makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Marriage I Story. Did. Okay. So I guess I can put that on the bottom of the list. Of and I most... guess it's just not relatable for me. For like me, the it concepts. was very relatable. Oh, so you, you saw it too. Yes, I saw it. Where does that rank? I mean, did you think it was a good movie? <sighs> so, yeah. I will say it's a good movie because I liked it. And I enjoyed watching it, but I'm not sure I enjoyed watching it because Adam Driver was it uh, was on it or not. So I mean, I just I just <laughs> looked at them and only I could only see um, Kylo Ren and Black Widow. But <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> and I was yeah, like, I was "Ooh, they're married!" That, oh. Yeah, it's, it's like, like Kylo Ren and Black like, Widow. That doesn't make sense. You could have just used the Force. Yeah. What is going exactly. on? Why did he, uh, yeah. 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 Everything could have been solved. Yeah, and and I think we we gotta talk too, cause like, you know, we we love movies. So when we say like, you know, we weren't a fan, it's just like we wished it could have been better. Cause when we the intent of when we watch it is, you know, there there's mm-hmm. we I mean, firsthand we work together, and we know like the amount of work it takes um, to to pull this all together. So we don't want ever ever want to diss the cast and crew. Oh no, um, or yeah. the writers uh, mm. of the movie. You know, it's just there are certain things that we like and and we don't like. So that's what we're kind of going to share. Yeah, right? but even talking about the story, I think that the story of the marriage story. So I feel like that you need to have a little bit of similar background to. Mm to be able to start relating to the movies and the characters. And what, what is it about anyways? It's, uh, it's about, it's about uh, the marriage. It, wait, it's about marriage? It's about marriage the falling apart. The story is about yes. marriage falling yes. apart? Yes. Is it as good as like Blue Valentine? I loved Blue Valentine. You got Come on. Ryan Gosling <laughs> and Michelle Williams? Ryan oh. Gosling. Oh, Ryan Gosling. Come on. Come on. There's not a single bad Ryan Gosling movie. You guys haven't yeah. seen it? You don't know Blue Valentine? Nope. Ugh. That was a super sad movie, and it's just the journey of the relationship of you know how they got. To... So is this following from like meet cute to separation? No, it's just like the story of their separation. Like from the very first that you start watching the story, they know that they are in the middle of separation, and you will be with them while they are like following the legal process and stuff and there are a lot of emotion still emotional baggages that they are carried away from the previous relationship together so to me it was like a very good and uh, good and relatable story not because of my own back stories but because i have seen so many similar stories in my cousins in my mm-hmm. friends lives or people generally around me so the reality of divorce is a harsh reality especially for the kids and um, if there is any kid involved and what I like about marriage story is that they try to show it also from the perspective of not the kid but the kid played a very essential role in that so I like that a lot so it wasn't heavily focused on the couples themselves it the kid was also playing an important role in the story um, line so you I like and it. your husband would it be a drama romantic comedy straight comedy science fiction foreign <laughs> what, kind of, <laughs> what kind of movie would what do you think you guys would be 
I see <laughs> romantic comedy. I'll answer for you. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's accurate. <laughs> yeah, that's accurate. So a foreign romantic comedy. Comedy. Yeah, yes. sometimes you guys need subtitles. Yes. Yes. Maybe not yes. your husband. <laughs> but. Yeah, and it's the funny, funniest fact for a lot of people that we also... So my husband is also Iranian. And, but we don't talk with each other in Persian or Farsi at home because we live with other roommates. So in order to be polite or like as a way of courtesy to our roommates, we, a lot of time we speak just in English together. So if someone else, if our roommates are hearing us, they won't feel like that. Oh, what are they talking about? Are they talking about us? I'm just joking. They are great. Um, they are, uh, uh, yeah. Shout out the future doctors. Yes, yes. So if, um, but I feel like that. Yeah, we talk a lot of time in English, so maybe there would be a little subtitle needed. <laughs> just a little. Yeah. No, you, especially... you guys speak perfect. You guys are you guys are perfect. Oh, thank you so much. Okay. I take mm-hmm. it as a compliment. I'm, uh, I'm a big fan of your husband, also quite jealous because there's not a single angle that you can take of him where his picture doesn't turn out very good. Yeah, very photogenic. You should yeah. do modeling. You should. <laughs> All right. So uh, let me go through a list of, you know, I know that um, there are a lot of movies that we're not going to get around to discussing today that are well known but I, I definitely want to give shout outs to some movies that I loved over the last year um, I loved uh, Tall Girl Late Night In the Shadow of the Moon is this amazing sci-fi movie too it's also a little bit of time travel but kind of backwards mm. so you guys should check that out um, I liked El Camino The Art of Self Defense Revenger is this off the wall ridiculous Korean actions martial arts movie. So if you haven't seen it, but you like quirky, weird, but cool, it was shot beautifully too. Revenger, awesome. I'm starting to come around to uh, Mr. Shia LaBeef because <laughs> Peanut Butter Falcon, Honey Boy, he's like batting, he's been a hundred. Um, this one a lot of you guys have heard of and seen ready or not but i'm a fan of samara weaving um sweetheart is awesome this is i i like kind of um isolation thrillers and things like that so this lady is stuck on an island i'm not gonna say anymore you got to figure out how she got there and if there's something going on. Is it bachel- she... like Bachelor in Paradise? No. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually like a, like a sci-fi creature horror flick, but I don't want to ruin it for you, sweetheart. Amazing movie. Villains, I loved it. The guy who uh, played uh, It, the, uh, the, the remix. Um, he's like the son of another actor. I forgot his name. Um, hit another pothole. Villains is awesome. Quirky. Uh, it's, so it's basically two people on the run. I think they just stole money or killed someone. I forgot what. They try and break into a, a house to hide out because I think the car died. And then uh, the uh, husband and wife return to their home. And uh, things aren't what they seem. So it's a matter of oh. who's the Ooh. real villain. <laughs> uh, I want to watch that movie based on the description you gave me Mm -hmm. i want to watch that movie well i'm going to end with the movie that you guys must watch first but uh shout out to uncut gems uh adam sandler he can act when he wants to man punch struck love he gave an amazing performance there and he gives another one here in uncut gems um bombshell was great for the performance uh performances of margot robbie and charlize theron um and nicole kidman um great performances there but if I can just recommend one movie, and I've, I'm so disappointed because I've already recommended and you guys haven't seen it yet. But to you out there, please listen to me. Don't be like them. One Cut of the Dead is an amazing foreign film. Yes, you got to read subtitles if you don't understand the Japanese language. Uh, I was going to say Nihama, but that's Chinese. <laughs> uh, one Cut of the Dead. Breakdown. This is the most unique. Like, I was shaking my head like... Man, I didn't think about this. The movie starts from the middle, ends, and then you get the beginning and the end. I kind of ruined a little bit of it because it was a surprise, but it's so interesting. It's uh, it's kind of like this 
zombie comedy but a completely unique take on the zombie movie and just a completely unique take on filmmaking so if you love zombies if you love filmmaking if you love behind the scenes filmmaking if you love comedy if you like a little bit of <laughs> horror it's got everything for you you just gotta read subtitles but if you can make it through that this is up there with parasite to me uh, so I know that that uh, that one cut of the dead. I don't think it got any nominations whatsoever. But to me, it was just a surprising, creative, and engaging. I will watch uh, that. I want to watch that based on so, the I recommendation you gave. <laughs> so I yeah. promise you, I will watch it. Okay. All right. And then you know what, viewers, we will have a debate. Let's watch it. Us watch it also, and we will see how accurate. His recommendations are. Oh, uh-huh. don't break my heart. If you guys don't like it, I don't care. I will love it. No, it <laughs> it's ab- that's exactly the thing. It's absolutely okay to have like different opinions just because like the same case with the marriage story. Just because she didn't like it doesn't mean it's not a good movie. And just because I love it, it doesn't mean that it's a great movie or appealing to all different sort of tastes out there. So what we need to learn is that it's absolutely okay to like have different opinions and that's what i love about like this industry yeah, because you will see a lot of diverse uh, like movie and diverse styles and like movies shots in different styles and with different stories and oh yeah so you're saying we're not gonna like try to fight each other across the table yeah we can still yeah, argue under it. Well, yeah definitely we're not gonna but try and like Stephen Smith, you know like, my point max is- kellerman this you know we're not gonna try and stir up a conflict or anything like that but yeah mm-hmm. i just I, I can't wait for you guys to watch it's just so we can discuss it like mm-hmm. regardless if you guys like it or not i think it's just such a creative such a creative goal that they try to do with this film and I personally think they succeeded and it fits my style. So if you guys have a chance. So just a question. If you want to rate uh, Train to Busan and this. Oh, Train to Busan was awesome too. Was that Bong Joon-ho also? Did he do that? Or is it one of the Korean director? I think it was an, a different was Korean director. Dude, Korean's, Korean, Korean film right now is, I mean, for a while. I think Japanese film had had this like, like huge run with like especially their horror films and and Koreans yeah. are, are kind of shining in the light right now um by far one cut of the dead love it okay yeah great. by far by far it train of busan is is great but it's more traditional this is just to me just off the wall because Look, to I'll me that movie was down. like also no, very different write it down, write it down. <laughs> i've said it enough i think i've mentioned this movie like 15 times i know i have a horrible memory I need to write stuff down or else I'll forget. Goodness. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. We've got a few more minutes, so we're going to wrap this up. Thank you guys for being patient with us as we kind of like um, get our format, you know, ironed out. Hopefully we mentioned some interesting movies to you. Uh, let's talk before we go, though, about movies we're looking forward to. I'll list them off and then you guys tell me which. These are the movies that stand out to me. You tell me which movies you guys are looking forward to seeing so birds of prey is out already uh blumhouse if you like um horror movies they've got a take on fantasy island going on uh i'm interested to see the reception for sonic the hedgehog after that whole cgi debacle yeah that'll be interesting um the invisible man with elizabeth moss um she's also one of those people that always generally like makes good movies or is in good movies i love john krasinski and what he did with the quiet place so quiet place part two is coming out march 20th Oh, and let's back up. February 14th for Blumhouse, uh, Fantasy Island, Sonic the Hedgehog. February 28th, The Invisible Man. So February, we got those three movies coming out. A Quiet Place Part 2. Um, March 27th, Mulan. That's, I think, based around Asian characters. So that's for you. Um, Mulan was my favorite Disney princess. <laughs> <laughs> New Mutants. Uh, the new Bond movie, No Time to Die. Those are coming out in April. And then May 1st, we've got... Finally, another Marvel movie, Black Widow, is coming out um, May 1st. Any of those movies you guys going to be in the theaters lined up, ready to see? Um, I think that I am excited to see what they want to do with like uh, A Quiet Place Part 2. Because I can't imagine how they want to take it further. Mm-hmm. If it's like in any way related to the characters. and Because I haven't read about it. But uh, 
I'm excited about that, but the movie that I want to see in the theater for sure from your list is like Black Widow. Oh, yeah. 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 So that's the one, one that. One hundo. Definitely. 100%. Black Widow. I love that they're, you know, like um, going back and I, I want to see David Harbour as yeah. um, the Red Guardian, right? Yeah, he's, yeah. A, he's a good actor. Hellboy, you know, was, was all right, but Stranger Things, right? He was yeah. always awesome. And yes. so, yes. What, uh, so you're definitely going to be in line dressed as Mulan to watch Mulan. Oh, definitely. <laughs> I actually, I, I actually like for Mulan, um, I know I've, a lot of people are upset that they're not. Um, putting all they don't have the songs in which I mean I love the songs it's not a musical they're not gonna sing at all no and which I like because it'll be something different did you guys watch The Lion King yes um, Yes. Jungle Book I didn't watch The Jungle Book I watched The Lion King because those both had the original sound like songs yeah Yeah, very similar yeah and I didn't I mean the new Lion King movie was just the animated the cartoon animated yes. movie in a different look so you're saying it was almost like a shot for shot recreation it was shot for shot there are many uh, shot okay. for shots uh-huh. so i i don't really get the so point of it interesting. so they're not gonna so new music here it's just a straight up story i think the they're long, the i think one story you know they'll have like the background soundtrack but it won't be in the, like singing okay okay yeah, and also I think it's going to be interested, uh, interesting for a lot of audience to see a different take. Like mm-hmm. past summer, the Aladdin movie was not exactly the thing um, with the car. I mean, it wasn't exactly the same as the cartoon uh, version, the animated version, which I really like and I enjoyed it. But I know that, again, it's like 50-50, like 50%, 50% of people love to see a, like a shot by shot uh duplication of the uh original like anime animated movie and a lot, some people like me they want to see a different take so yeah. i'm excited mm-hmm. about mulan movie as well nice yeah i wish i could share that excitement <laughs> but, and, and they changed her because you know her her name is in the original anime movies fa mulan but they changed the pronunciation to be more accurate. Accurate, so it's Hua Mulan. Oh yeah, this one speaks so I uh, like... Chinese too, or sorry, Mandarin. <laughs> you oh. don't speak a Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> speak a Mandarin or Canton- Cantonese, right? Those no are Cantonese. No Cantonese. No. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, that's uh, good. I don't think we're gonna have time to talk about um, upcoming streaming shows or um, anything else for now. Can so, we, but can we express our excitement and love for Mandalorian one more time? Okay, so <laughs> so we also want to talk about streaming stuff, obviously, because that's like a you know a, a huge um, platform of movies with some talented and amazing people. So mm-hmm. yeah, twenty. Uh, well, when did it come out? Did it come out late last Mandalorian? year? Mandalorian. Yeah, it came out last year. Yeah. Last year. Okay, so yeah. can we All agree that probably the out. biggest thing from last year was? Baby Yoda. Baby Yoda. Ooh. I mean, the Mandalorian. I think is just one of the best um, Star Wars universe things put out there. So, I, did you like yeah. the fact that there weren't a lot of tie-ins to the you know Skywalker? Yes, I did. Finally, right? finally, yes. And I don't know. It gives you space to breathe. I don't mm-hmm. know if you feel like the same as me. Like whenever I watch like a Star Wars movie and. I cannot get all the relationships right and I cannot remember the facts right, I will get frustrated because everything, again, as you said, it kind of tied back to the whole like uh, Skywalker like um, backstory. But mm-hmm. in Mandalorian, you will enjoy it because you will learn new facts and without mentioning the name of Skywalker, which is... Yeah, like, and the lore of the Mandalorian, yeah. the Mandalore is so cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely that they never take the suit off, never yeah. take the mask yes. off. And the, I think what he's what a strong character. Friends, like, this is the way. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, this is through the, the mask, you can kind of see him emote, right? Yeah, and, yeah, and the use of silence is really yeah. good. Yes. 
Yeah, definitely. And this thing is this thing is shot brilliantly too. Yes. But yeah, just that relationship and that dynamic between him and Baby Yoda, like oh. like when he tries to use the Force for the first time and he puts him back in the floaty crib, or when he's trying to get the little um, the little ball from like the, mm-hmm. the gear shift on the spaceship. He's right? playing with all the controls. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, and then when he gets into a brawl with Gina Carano, who is like a, a MMA fighter, mm-hmm. the Mandalorian versus her, and then he kind of waddles, or, or no, and then they stop and they look up and there's Baby. Yoda yoda like sipping on some broth right? <laughs> <laughs> like yeah i just love you know what i i don't even know if i love the entire story to be honest with you the arc but i love the mandalorian because i i love baby yoda but you it, will also fall in love with the character i yeah, feel like I yeah feel like that. you also fall in love with the mandalorian yeah and I think they have really good side characters, and I especially think they have like strong female characters who like yes. represent a variety of like different. Yeah, the other interesting um, thing for me was like that. Usually, you will see a softer side of like female character at some point in the story, but in like Mandalorian, you will see more soft sides of the Mandalorian character than the female character. So. Mm-hmm. That was like a surprising fact, or at least like a very nice um, element for me to like mm-hmm. it a lot. I agree. Yeah, it took me a while because what episode did the Mandalorian start discussing with? I think they, they oh, man, I forget the uh, character's name, um, but he was explaining to this female character on this planet when they were. Oh man, my memory sucks. That you know, we didn't do a pre-show or anything like that, so. Um, uh, we'll we'll get our facts better when when we start talking about these things. I will. They're doing a great job. Um, but remember, he had this conversation with the this female that was like going to watch over Baby Yoda, and mm-hmm. he was the Mandalorian was sort of explaining like, you know, why he why he doesn't take off, um, the, you know, the, the mask, suit, and the ma- she yeah. she really wanted to, yeah. you know, have him be able to experience, you know, that sort of like freedom or whatever. But yeah, like it was at that point that the Mandalorian's character really turned for me, you know. Um, but I mean, aside from that, just it was all around entertaining. It was like a blast mm-hmm. and a breeze to watch. Um, we've got yeah. some other things that we'll talk about next time, like Picard and Watchmen. I was a huge fan Picard. of the new Watchmen series. If you guys haven't seen that take, uh, Damon Lindelof's take on on Moore's uh, Watchmen characters, that's pretty cool, too. Um, We've got some basic (laughs) housekeeping to go ahead, unless you guys wanted to add anything else. No. I just want to thank you for being with us. and like. Yes, thank you. Yeah, and if you watch till this very end moment, just gives us a thumbs up and yeah like subscribe like i said we um you know we're we're really dedicated to um you know making sure that we get better each time we um do this and uh you know aside from just uh us just loving talking about movies and the different elements that stand out to us we want to make sure that you enjoy this shoot show too so um any improvements drop them down in the comment section below you can also find our social links in the Um, description below on this video Um, shout out me at Michael Murdo all the socials you can find me pretty easy Um, do you guys want any uh, to drop any lines are you guys comfortable with just me putting the link down I think the link down is fine okay so we look forward to hearing any and all comments and uh, we will work on the next show and get that episode one (laughs) all right thank you guys for watching the pilot uh we don't have a name yet otherwise i would say it but take care and uh we'll see you you later